you see my slides? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so um, the first thing is uh, we have this course website as this deep learning crash course.org. Uh, it, it has a reading list and uh, uh, other materials. So for the homework, uh, it will also be posted to this website. Uh, so that's the place uh, you may want to go to check out. Um, so the reason, uh, the first part, uh, maybe we should go back to a little bit history, you know. Uh, uh, just one moment, it's two more people coming in. Okay. So this, this wave of deep learning really starts uh, at 2012. Um, one famous uh, research was done on that year is this Google CAT study. So people at Google, they, they trained a neural net. It's actually an autoencoder. Um, by today's standard, it's actually a pretty small <laughs> uh, model, which they use 1,000 computer and 16,000 um, a course, so it's like 16 call per computer. But this model is show the ability that it can recognize human face, cat face, uh, human body parts. Yeah. It was quite a buzz by then. It was on all kinds of news saying that the computer can now recognize cat on the internet. Um, this bring lots of people's interests uh, for this kind of machine learning type models. Uh, another big event on that year is this uh, Alex Knight, which uh, win the uh, image night competition uh, by a large margin to the second place. So they, uh, unlike the Google uh, model, which we, as a general lab, so we can't have 1000 computers to train this model, right? Uh, what's special on Alex Knight is Firstly, uh, 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 people can download all the training data. Uh, and also AlexNet is small enough that people can train on their own uh, computers. So this actually uh, caused lots of people to start in research in this field. Um, uh, another major reason is available of the GPU. So this CUDA, uh, CUDA device, which uh, allow the fast matrix and vector computation. So then this whole thing starts uh, as a big wave. Now it's uh, making impact in many different fields like autonomous driving, uh, medical imaging, uh, natural language processing, uh, which like GPT type models. Um, uh, like drones on the robotics. So one famous uh, research is this deep man for alpha fold. Um, they now have alpha fold too. Um, so the, the, the key part of this alpha fold is a convolutional neural net, uh, which map the uh, 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 communal acids uh, to their you know, relative distance. So basically this CNN is give you a uh, how 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 apart if uh, every uh, you know uh, communal acids should relate to each other? Then they have another algorithm to compute the protein structure. So this all sparked the deep learning. Uh, if we look at you know this uh, the trend, um, which actually reveals why deep learning is uh, is come come in today. So first thing is um, over the last decade, there are exponential growth in the amount of data and also exponential decay um, in, the, in the cost to store the data. So combine these two factors. Um, it's basically just tell people there are a lot, a lot more data available these days. Um, this trend is not only in the com consumer market. So in the field like uh, what we do, medical imaging, uh, it's become uh, follow this trend as well. So previously, maybe three years ago, four years ago, if you have a data set like 300 patients, uh, then that's something uh, worth published. Now people is publishing data like 100,000 patients. Um, so there are certainly a lot more 
uh, data available. Uh, at the same time, it's uh, you know exponential increase of the computing powers. Um, uh, partly, it's uh, improvement on the GPU and other um, uh, other designed chips for deep learning. Uh, the other part is the available of the cloud. So by um, utilizing the cloud computing, we can actually, uh, like in this course, I'm, I'm, I mean, for many of you, we actually using the cloud VM. So we can easily start, you know, 50 computers on the cloud, then train a very big model. Um, so combine all of this, so increase the uh, amount of data and the increase of computing powers. The overall trend is the model size has got a bigger and bigger every year. So on this uh, on this chart, on the scale, the cost to train the model is really a log scale. So every time it's 100 times increase. Uh, you can see uh, on this log scale, the, the, the the price to train model is basically proportional to the model size and the data size. It's pretty much on a straight line. So they are actually looking at you know model size increase a tenfold every year. Uh, for example, uh, in this GPT three model, they have uh, uh, one hundred seventy five billion parameters. So that that's actually not the biggest anymore. So uh, early this year, they have a uh, China some lab uh, release uh, another model Wudao 2.0, which uh, even a lot bigger, which we will uh, they will introduce in later lecture. So uh, the overall observation is um, actually summarized on the picture on the left. So why deep learning success is because with the amount of data increase, the performance is keep increasing. So compared to the traditional deep uh, traditional machine learning algorithm, with more data, actually, uh, you will hit a gap on the performance. So, which means uh, even we have a lot of data, it will not help. But uh, if the model uh, capacities keep increasing, then now it's it can just use utilize all of those data to give the. Uh, very high performance. So that's why deep learning is successful. And also that's the reason why it seems we'll keep that way for the many years to come. Uh, another aspect of deep learning is uh, actually quite fascinating to me. So in this course, we will learn a, a deep learning toolbox, which I call, which uh, is a, a a set of key tools and concepts and, uh, and algorithms. The beauty is the same set of tools, uh, you can use it on many different types of data. It could be a, a continuous waveform like this uh, sound wave, or it could be a medical image, or it could be a satellite image, or it could be text, uh, or it could be uh, molecule structures. The beauty is the same, same toolbox is actually uh, applicable to all these fields. Um, uh, in my opinion, this makes the deep learning a very, very good investment because we learn these uh, key concepts once, then it's very widely applicable. So uh, one, one expectation uh, uh, for this course, even from uh, you know, upper manage, management is that <laughs> given that we are so diverse in this DIR, um, if if we know how this deep learning works, maybe there are more innovation can be can be made by applying this technique to different domain. So look at the current impact of deep learning. Um, uh, if we take this uh, uh, ARC invest research results. Uh, what they do is they summarize the market cap created by the uh, internet versus deep learning. So uh, like 1997, which uh, virtually machine learning create no market cap. Now it's creating uh, something on the order of $2 trillion. 
uh, compared to the internet, which uh, uh, with all this mobile internet, 5G uh, come, come along, uh, it's creating something like $13 trillion. Um, but what they expect is in the next uh, two decades, um, the deep learning will impact many industries and it could uh, explode to create like $30 trillion. Uh, at the same time, the internet business will increase too, but uh, what's fascinating is deep learning based technique actually will create more value than internet. Um, if this really come true, then uh, it's make, you know, learning this deep learning kind of uh, essential <laughs> for the future. But what's the current status uh, for different industries? So uh, in this study, McKinsey did a, a survey, which uh, they surveyed many uh, top uh, companies, asking them, in your business, uh, do you at least using one machine learning driven function? Um, so overall, the percentage is pretty low, uh, except this high tech company, which is something around 40%. So what this chart tell me is uh, the penetration of deep learning at this time is uh, still uh, not fully fulfilled. It's still a long way to go. So uh, I think, you know, it, it's not too late to get into this field. Even this field has been there uh, in the past eight years. It's maybe, I would argue, just correct time um, for people like us, not from computer science, but from other domain to get into deep learning then using this technique in our own domain. Okay, so for this course, what we want to achieve is uh, I want to introduce the basics of deep learning, uh, which is on the mathematics level, how it works, not only concepts. Uh, the reason is there are many materials online which uh, uh, actually introduce concepts of deep learning, but uh, for us to really understand how it works, we need to uh, go to the equation. Um, so we need a little bit more depth than those uh, online tutorials. Uh, another aspect is uh, practical. So uh, it's essential we build our own models. Uh, basically, you need to write your own code, then debug model, then hit the bug, then solve them. You know, just feel the pain, no pain, no gain. Truly, in this deep learning. Uh, for this reason, uh, which I actually spend quite an effort to prepare some assignments which full of coding problems. Um, it will uh, hopefully, you know, get everyone into this deep learning. Uh, another reason we want to do this is to improve the uh, community interests uh, within the DIR. Uh, also uh, encourage collaboration. So um, deep learning may be a great opportunity for people to uh, work together uh, because now, uh, you know, we have something common to discuss. Uh, the, the last one is very practical. So for the trainee and the fellows, um, there are many deep learning related jobs. Uh, I can guarantee you that, which uh, is even, even more these days, um, given current job market is it's, uh, very much, you know, um, there are just so many vacancies um, if, if you know this technique. So I think for the future, you know, job hunting, this is an essential technique. Um, so let's get some cross logistics. So firstly, the website. Um, so I hope you had visit this website. So um, deeplearningcrashcourse.org. Uh, if you have, uh, I think I will put the assignments also into the website, uh, including reading lists uh, and the slides and videos. Um, uh, we will use this uh, Zoom link uh, recurrently for the next 12 weeks, uh, including the Q&A session on Friday. Uh, another comments on the instructors. Uh, 
so I used to have uh, David Hansen to teach with me. Uh, unfortunately, he he cannot do this this term because of some personal reason. So I will be teaching. Um, yeah, I already emailed the information. So for, for setting up your computer for Linux and Windows uh, using the CUDA, some instruction is on these two websites. Um, we will have teach uh, review sessions as we go. So depend on the feedback. Uh, this Friday, uh, I think uh, I'm planning to uh, spend half of the Q&A time to show everyone uh, how to debug and log in to Linux box, um, how to debug a uh, deep learning model uh, using the VS code. Then the other half, we can do uh, question and answers. Uh, another is GPU. So I hope for, for everyone uh, who had asked for a VM virtual machine, uh, I already sent you the link uh, yesterday. So please have a try. And uh, if you have problem to log in, uh, let me know. Uh, also, uh, if you find out you actually need a VR uh, to do the homework, yeah, please let me know too. Uh, we can add in the new virtual machine to the pool. Uh, for this, actually, we, we should assign DIR, the uh, institute, uh, paid this VM. So the price is uh, every month, if we use it 24 seven, it's like 600 bucks. Uh, so <laughs> the plan to keep it uh, on until December. So we will use it every once three months. Um, so it's a small cost uh, for the DIR, but uh, very lucky we got uh, you know leadership to cover this cost. Okay, so the beauty of this course really lies in the its assignments. Uh, I have to argue that if if one wants to really learn this, then they have to spend time to do these assignments. They are in total five assignments. So first one is on uh, deep learning basics and. Uh, Uh, the second one is on bike prop, um, introducing PyTorch uh, and other topics. The third is on convolutional neural net. So many different uh, usage of neural net, including uh, you will actually code up one of this type of neural net. Uh, this architecture is called a UNet. Uh, it's very common for segmentation detection task. So uh, don't be scared by this uh, different layers. I guarantee you will know what to do uh, by then. The fourth uh, assignment is on recurrent neural net attention mechanism uh, and the recent very hot uh, transformer models. So uh, lots of efforts was spent. I have to <laughs> tell you that uh, we will each build a transformer model like this. Okay, this model is identical to the famous GPT, it's only much smaller, but every logic, every everything is identical. So if you scale this, you know, to 175 billion parameters, then you have a GPT-3. <laughs> so by doing this homework, you will understand how this transformer works. Um, the fifth assignment is on, um, different aspects, for example, model saving and loading in different formats, uh, adversarial attack, how to fool a model, then generative model, so this GAN, GAN type of models. So we will uh, build a GAN ourselves. Um, then there are other topics like transfer learning, meta learning. Um, so another aspect is homework is there are many tools useful for the deep learning, which uh, in the lecture we will not introduce, but they will be introduced in the homework. So uh, you will be encouraged to read some website, maybe learn a new software, uh, then do the homework. So we will use uh, 
uh, one tool called the weights and biases for experiment management. That's the best in the field, in my opinion. Um, so the goal is that after homework, uh, we will have all the tools uh, to get started to build your own model. Okay, that's basically the introduction uh, of this uh, 